working pretty diligently, very quickly on that, because again, this is all about people. We're really fortunate to have great people in our program. We're gonna recruit great young ladies into our program, but we're also going to recruit a, a staff that not only can help teach and develop on the court, but a staff that does a good job of teaching and developing off the court. That's just as important and has a lot of fun doing it. Our staff ha has a great deal of, of synergy uh, and we've had that and so that's really important whether, you know, and how we build it here, it is important that we have diversity on our staff. It's important that we have people who are going to challenge me, even though I don't always love that, not gonna lie about that, but they challenge me in ways to consider different things, to grow and, and continue to get better all I've been really fortunate during my career to have coaches who have done that, and certainly that is who we're looking to add into our staff here. Uh, welcome, Don, to the University of Minnesota. Joe Schmidt, Channel 5. Uh, the landscape, landscape has obviously changed in college athletics. Do you have to coach different now, especially with the portal, trying to keep everybody happy and keep everybody here? Well, I would, I would answer that question a little bit differently. I would answer it, how, how do I coach? What, what do we, how do we build accountability? And I think that is something that in, in all of our practices, we compete. And so when we have our, our workouts, there's a number system. And so our young ladies will compete against themselves and they'll compete from one day to the next day to continue getting better. And so that's, that competitiveness then typically carries over into games. And then when, and, and then after that, happens now you find a new challenge and a new way to go about doing that and so you know I, I think ultimately uh, this is the, the reason this happened as fast as it did is because as Mark mentioned we have young ladies who there's there's an this is this is an anxious time for them and so it's important that there we have an opportunity to build a, a connection and continue to grow and so uh, I think that's something that's really important for us moving forward. Hey Don, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Welcome to Minneapolis. Thank you. The conference looks pretty different from the last time you were in it. I think 2012, there were two Big Ten teams that finished in the top 25. As you look forward to the next five years, what is going to differentiate the Minnesota women's basketball program from the rest of the conference? Is UCLA and USC coming to the fold? All right, I, th I think certainly when you're in a conference and the competition is really strong at a very high level, and certainly the Big Ten is at that level, you can look at it one of two ways, and you can say, Man, I wish it wasn't right now because then we can make up ground a little bit faster. Or you can look at it and you can say, good, it's pretty good right now. So once we learn how to compete, that means we're going to have a chance to be where, where we're doing some special things too. And so we're going to choose the second way to look at that and say, we, we have an opportunity to grow and compete in one of the best conferences in the nation right now. And we're watching that as we're going through the, the NCAA tournament. And so, you know, we're excited about the challenges. You have a very extensive coaching resume. Uh, Are you saying I'm old? <laughs> <laughs> Is no. that what that um, I mean, but last year with West Virginia was your five as a head that you went in, in any kind of approach things and, and I guess what you learned from that experience. Well, I think every opportunity, every, every opportunity to learn, certainly I believe that I did in the course of this year, you know, you know of it, it different in how we, how, how our game is out and the time frame in between and the accessibility to recover. So uh, there's a lot that I learned during the course of the past year that hopefully will help us get better now here. Greeter of St. Paul Pioneer Press. Your three tenants, uh, the third one, find a way. How did that come to be <laughs> one of your building works? It's a good question on a farm in, in West Bend, Wisconsin. And so I think there's probably a lot of that, that building block that came from that mentality. You know, and, and so my sister and I can attest to this. We did all the work for our brother who really didn't do a lot. I hope he's watching too, just for the record. But there are times that you'd come home from school and you want to go and you want to do all those things, but do the job at hand first. You've got to bale the hay. You've put it in the barn you got to do all those things and then so and sometimes it wasn't convenient a lot of times it certainly wasn't but you had to find a way to get it done and you, a lot of times things would break down and you still had to get it in before the rain would come and so I think a lot of that is just based upon how I've been raised and that you know you just you have to find a way to do it and get it done you 
Yeah, Pat Borzi with MinPost.com again. Is there a team playing in the NCAA tournament right now that plays a style that's similar to what you want this team to play? <laughs> that's a really I, that one's really hard for me to answer because I believe this, you know, when people ask, what is our style? What is our offense going to look like? Uh, ultimately, it depends on our time together and working and growing and putting these young ladies in the best situation to be successful. So whether that's a four out one in motion, whether that's a three out two in, you know, whether it's a whatever it is, whether that's a, a chin offense that runs into something else that runs into a motion offense, I don't know yet. It's going to depend on how we kind of come together and what that looks like. And that's kind of the fun of building all this together, too. So, you know, defensively, I think it's really important that that we continue to get better on the defensive end, limit opportunities. Everybody wants to run. That's fun. It's fun to play fast. Well, how do you play fast? You got to get stops. It's hard to play fast if you don't get stops. So you got to be really event first and foremost to be able to get out in transition and make things happen. And then when you're in transition, you want to take care of the basketball because there's nothing worse than you're playing fast, but you're giving it back right back. You got to go back on defense and get another stop. So for us, it's a matter of we need to make sure that we're really good on the defensive end, and then we build into the offense after that. So to be clear, uh, uh, probably. Rebounding and defense will be foundations of this team, regardless of the style you went. You ultimately play. Absolutely, I think in order for us, our, our first, you know, uh, tenant. I use the word building block, but I kind of like tenant. Maybe I have to use that word now. But for, first, us is going to be toughness and toughness. In order for us to be good defensively, you need to finish plays. Whether that means tip a pass and then go go get on the floor and, and finish it. Whether it means save it out of bounds. Whether it means finish with a rebound. Whatever it looks like, you have we have to be really good at finishing plays. I'm Chip Scoggins with the Star Tribune. You mentioned home a couple times. How much does that help you in recruiting, uh, having those connections already, so you're not basically starting over? Yeah, it feels great. You know, it's been great to reach out to a number of the coaches so far and and to reconnect with them and, and then hear kind of who they have. So it's been that's been really good. It's been really fun for me to, to see some people who have been doing this as long as I have, sometimes even longer than I have. So it's been great to be a part of that. And it's it's very comfortable and it's been a, a great deal of of uh, being really busy really early on because I have an opportunity because I have a lot of connections. Any more questions for Coach? Uh, Jim Suhan, to being again. Do you uh, foresee going to the transfer portal to round out this group or would you like, rather stay young and build with this group? Well, I think it's going to be important for us to get to a roster that we can compete with. And so what, from a number standpoint, you know, right now we have, you know, a, a roster that we probably have to add some players because it's ideal to be at 12, 13, 14, 15 players or something along those lines. And, and ideally, you know, to continue for, for us from a, a, in terms of practicing. You know, it's great to be able to go four on four on four. It's great to be able to go five on five on five. It's great to be able to do those things. And so, yes, I think initially we will have to kind of round out part of our roster that way. Don Chantel with The Athletic. You mentioned that you'll have a practice tomorrow, I believe. That's correct. I'm just curious, as someone that's never been a coach, how do you plan a first practice? What is the value in that? And what do you see that maybe you didn't see in the meeting you had with the team? Okay, how do we plan our first practice? I think what's important for our young ladies, it, it, what's really important is for them to understand why we're going to do things. So instead of just setting up some cones and we're gonna do some finishing drills and grab a pad, we'll show them some film. We'll show them some film of teams within the Big Ten and how, how they defend things or how we need to defend them. Defense will probably, probably won't be tomorrow, you guys. Just, it'll be offense tomorrow. You guys will be happy. You will love that. Offense is way more fun to practice at this time of the year. So I said that, but I didn't really mean that. It'll be offense. You know, but then we'll look at maybe how, how in the past our team here at Minnesota has, has attacked a certain type of, of a look defensively. And then we'll look at maybe how teams that I've coached have done that so they can see it, so they understand why they're doing it. And then we'll go out and hopefully we have some – practice guys that can help us simulate some of those things and we can do that. So I think it's it's important for for young ladies to know why we're doing what we're doing rather than we're just going to 
drive from the top of the key and we're going to get to the basket and we're going to work on different finishes. Real quickly, have you been in touch with the incoming class and what the status is there? Uh, and, and any idea on, on what they're thinking? Right. I have had a chance to speak to all but one of them, and we're talking later today. Uh, on In talking to one of the young ladies, Dom was a young lady who on Tuesday of this past week went to the NCAA and filled out that release form for that. So I think that is one young lady who is at least you know, anticipating looking at, at options at this point in time. But from what I've gathered from the others, I've really, really excited to play with these young ladies. They're excited. You know, we're building something around them, and they want to be a part of it. If we don't have any other questions from the media, we'll let Coach exit to her left and bring up Director Coyle, and we'll take Uh, Jim Suhan, Star Tribune. Did, were you looking for somebody who had connections to the Midwest and to Minnesota recruiting when you, you started the search? Yeah, Jim, um, it's good to see you. You know, when um, back a few years ago when Commissioner Delaney was uh, still here at the Big Ten, uh, I had a chance to sit down and talk with him about Minnesota and, and, and how do we build this place the right way. And, and we had a long conversation, and, and uh, I reflected on that conversation. Uh, Chip wrote a pretty good article, and my mom, who's 84, reads you guys, Chip, and she told me I need to read your article. We were, we're looking at what we were trying to put in place here, and, and when, we, um, when we looked at the campaign, remember when we, when we announced uh, the transition with our program, we talked about this was an attractive job because of our student athletes that we have in place. And, and we felt like we could go out and we could get a, a head coach who's done it at many different levels, and the fact that she has such strong connections back here are a huge positive for us in our program as we move forward. Hey, Mark, uh, Dave Campbell, Associated Press. Uh, kind of big big enough that how important was it for this uh, new, new coach to have a significant amount of head coach experience already? Uh, you know, it, it part, you know, obviously, um, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, when I was at Syracuse, I had a chance to go to the Women's Final Four at that basketball program. And, and I talked to our, our senior staff, I talked to our staff and our student athletes. That's addicting to get to that level and to have that opportunity. And, and we felt it was important to find a coach, again, who's won at a high level. Uh, obviously, we saw what she did at South Dakota when she took them to the Sweet 16. Um, I can tell you I watched a lot of West Virginia basketball the last three weeks and what she did with that program to get them into the NCAA tournament in year one. And so I think those things, again, are going to be very positive for our program as we move forward. Mark, uh, Chip Scott, going to start to me. Uh, how concerned were you the fact that she had only been there one year? That was going to be a hurdle for you. Uh, you know, uh, our first comment, and I think, I think the very first word I said to her was, I left a place after one year. It can be done, and, and it's hard. And, and, you know, you and I have talked about the emotions. You kind of, as Dawn said, uh, you can't control timing. And, and I know West Virginia meant a lot to her and her family. They invested a lot in that program. They invested a lot in her. But, uh, again, that was our very first conversation. We talked about that and what it was like for me and my family to go so I think we found some common ground, uh, but again, we're just elated to have her here and be a part of our program. And Mark, what are your expectations here? I mean, you have, you have talent, and now you have a very experienced coach. What do you expect? You know, Jim, I, I think it's the same expectation we have for all. Again, if you, uh, it's not very Minnesotan to talk about these things. And take a step back, and if you look at our whole athletic program in totality, uh, you know, we have one of the highest public rated schools with academic success. Uh, I think our GPA for our student athletes is over 3 2, which is unheard of. Our teams do. If you look in the Director's Cup, every year we're in the top 25, top 30, which means we're finishing in the top 10% nationally. So we have teams that are competing at a high, high level, and there's no reason why our women's basketball team can't do that, and we feel really, really confident that we've got the right coach, we've got the right young lady. Our program can start to see some significant success in that side of it. Yeah, I'm Mark George, George Spence, Channel 5. You made quite a financial commitment, uh, also a six-year commitment. Um, when you do that, is there, is there any doubt at all, or is that just kind of saying the confidence you have and where she can raise this program? Uh, the confidence where she can raise this program, you know, and obviously, 
You know, again, I, I mentioned President Gable. We're so grateful for her support, our board leadership. You know, we had conversations with them, and if you look at, you know, the salary rank within the Big Ten, the investment that other programs have made, uh, we felt like that was more than a fair investment uh, to attract a coach of Don's caliber. So we feel like we're in a really good spot on that side of it. Mark, uh, Chip, again, you said you watched a lot of West Virginia basketball the last three weeks. What did you see that you liked? Uh, I really liked her. I liked her uh, her energy and excitement uh, on the on the court. And, you know, I, I know when, uh, you know, I, I had a chance. I was joking with her yesterday at lunch when I was in in selection week, uh, between watching all the men's games, I'm watching West Virginia and Oklahoma State play in the Big 12 tournament, a close game. She's upset, but it was a close game, but I'm watching her demeanor because I wanted to see how she would interact because, uh, you know, when we, again, when we went through our transition, when I had a chance to meet with the team, I told them our first priority was going to be somebody who valued the importance of the student-athlete experience, academically, athletically, and socially. And so I had a chance to watch that game, and then uh, Friday I had a chance to watch her game against Arizona, when I was in Des Moines uh, for the men's basketball tournament, I had a chance to watch her game and, and see that as well. So, again, I just feel really thankful that her, her family believed in coming to Minnesota. And I really think we have great, great days in front of this program. Mark Andy with the Pioneer Press. Uh, when it comes to NIL, how much are you uh, looking at just funding dollars for NIL? And then when you're presented from, from donors about give to the university or give to the NIL, what, what sort of advice do you have? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, you know, Andy, it's, it's a phenomenal question because a year ago I couldn't even talk to you about NIL. And, and that's how much it's changed with the NCAA. Now we can start to talk about NIL. And as you know, Jeremiah Carter, who uh, heads up our compliance department, we're transitioning him into a full-time NIL position with our athletic department. He will work closely with Dinky Town Athletes, our, our collective. Uh, that is a broad-based collective that is focused on all of our programs. Uh, and we're also in the process of hiring a fundraiser uh, for Dinky Town Athletes that will help fundraising efforts. And, and uh, Dusty Clements, Randy Handel, our Golden Gopher Fund, have done a wonderful job as we try to educate our donors but, but if you take a look at our program right now and you look at the facilities we have, uh, we have a lot. We're very, very fortunate. We're very blessed. Uh, NIL is the game changer. And, and when we talk to coaches, Don and I have had lots of conversations. Um, we encourage our donors to look at NIL to see the impact it has. We have very talented student athletes here. Uh, people reach out to them all the time, and we want to make sure that we maximize those, those NIL opportunities for our student athletes. So it's us to continue to educate our donors on the importance of helping out on that side of it as well. Yeah, Pat Borzi with MinPost.com. The volleyball hire aside, a lot of the hires that you've made are people who are from the Midwest, like you. What is it about um, the Midwest background that you think makes these folks a good fit here? Yeah, well, you know, um, what I've learned in here, when I, when I came back, I, I think I remember when I was hired, you, you, you all said I'm almost one of you. And I had no idea what that meant. But, you know, Minnesota has a very unique culture, right? And, and the Midwest has a unique culture. And, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, what attracted us to Minnesota was the Big Ten Conference. You know, as Don talked about, selfishly, I feel like we're in the best conference in America. Uh, I give Norwood, I give Beth a lot of credit when they came up with Athletes Village, uh, our Golden Gopher Fund, who's raised all this money for these great facilities. We've talked about the academic success of this institution. Everything is in place here, Pat. And, and what I like about the Midwest is people don't freak out when it snows. I mean, we, we joke about that and we tell people all the time, I, I have a chance, if I'm in town, I meet with all the recruits. And, and, and I think one of our strengths as a department is that we want to live in truth always. We always want to be truthful to people. And we tell recruits, it's going to snow here. That happens. But again, it's a mindset and, and you embrace it. It's that toughness. Dawn talked about that. So again, uh, I think when we look at Midwest people, uh, they, they understand what they're getting into here in Minnesota. They understand the state. They understand the Midwest. And again, you know, I go back to Chip's article. Chip talked about the Big Ten being cutthroat. I mean, it is a hard, hard league. Every night you have to compete. And I think those Midwestern attitude of roll up your sleeves, blue collar work ethic goes a long way here. Thank you.